We're reviewing the 360 millimeter Enermax TR4 Liktec cooler today, matched up against the 240 millimeter variant with a special appearance from Noctua and the NHU 14S air cooler. Our previous Enermax 240 millimeter Liktec benchmark gave an understanding for where full coverage liquid performs when compared to full coverage air and when compared to the smaller Azatec plates. Now we're expanding to look at how much radiator size impacts at 4 gigahertz 1.35 V core for a Threadripper 1950X CPU. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly, makers of the Conductonaut liquid metal that we recently used to drop 20 degrees off of our coffee lake temperatures. Thermal Grizzly also makes traditional thermal compounds for use on top of the IHS, like Cryonaut and Hydronaut pastes. Learn more at the link below. This one will be pretty quick. Our original version of this coverage covered the 240 millimeter Enermax cooler versus the Noctua air cooler and the NZXT Kraken X62, which is a smaller coverage cold plate Ace Attack unit. And that unit is pretty expensive and pretty high end. It just didn't work very well on Threadripper because the cold plate size actually matters a lot. So revisiting that today, the main focus here is to look at the 240 versus 360 millimeter coolers from Enermax to determine if after we've accounted for full coverage plates, if the radiator size makes a meaningful difference with this particular cooler. The NHU14S TR4, if you can find it in stock, should be about $80. The Enermax Liktec 240 cooler should be about $130. And the 360 unit right here with three 120mm fans should be about $150. These are all US prices uh, checked at the time of making the video. So that's what we're looking at for prices. It is a $20 difference between 240 and 360. Part of this testing will focus on noise normalization where we uh, lower down to 40 dBA fan speeds and then see how they perform at a fixed 40 decibel output. The most important aspect here is that while a larger radiator may not afford immediate gains in peak performance, depending on what it is, the radiator will afford better performance when you drop the noise levels further. The threshold between where uh, the temperatures are no longer safe is going to be a, a lower noise level for a 360 unit than for a 240. So keep that in mind as well. And of course, liquid is going to be objectively superior in identical test conditions with identical coolers. It just is. But the argument comes down to whether it makes sense for the user, whether the price makes sense, whether the uh, the installation or the application of the cooler makes sense in the particular build that it's being used for. So keep that in mind for your use case as we go through the numbers. As always, testing methodology will be defined in the article linked in the description below. So check that out if you're curious how we tested. We are using delta T over ambient values here. So this is a uh, temperature readout over ambient. That means that you can have numbers below ambient in terms of the reading, but that's because it's a delta. So starting out with a focus on the Enermax units. The Enermax 240mm CLC with a Prime 95 workload at 100% keeps the CPU at about 50.7 degrees Celsius over ambient, and it has an idle temperature of about 4.6 degrees Celsius over ambient. The 360mm version of the Enermax CLC, which adds one fan and also uses full coverage cold plates, it operates at 46.6 degrees Celsius and keeps an idle about 4.2. Idle is within margins but the average core temperature under load has reduced approximately four degrees Celsius from the 240 millimeter unit. At $150 for the 360 and 130 for the 240 unit, you're paying about an extra $10 per two degrees Celsius, if you look at it that way. This is more something that's done for absolute peak performance or potentially lower noise normalized thermals, so we'll see that soon. The Noctua NHU14S maintains impressively competitive performance at nine degrees warmer than the CLC240, but is 12.4 degrees warmer than the 360 millimeter unit. Still, for most people, the NHU14S is going to be perfectly fine. It just comes down to what you're doing with your CPU, how far you're pushing it, what kind of power is going through it, and things like that. Still using Prime 95, but normalizing the fan speeds to equate a 40 decibel noise level where the NHU14S already sits, the TR4 360 now runs four degrees warmer at 50.1 degrees Celsius, and the TR240 unit runs also about four degrees warmer from its previous 
full speed baseline at 54.8 degrees Celsius. The delta remains about the same between the coolers as previously as well, and this also gets the liquid coolers closer to the Nocto cooler in performance because we're slowing them down and lowering the noise level. Theoretically, this does mean that you could further lower noise floor from our 40 dBA readout, like to 34 to 36, for instance, and stay below the threshold at which the 240 would need a speed bump, but the 360 wouldn't. That's the main way to realize an advantage here, if that's something that's important to you. Back to 100% speeds now using Blender. Blender puts our Enermax units at 42.3 degrees Celsius for the 240 millimeter unit and 39 degrees Celsius for the 360. The Noctua NHEU 14S runs about 49.3 degrees or 10C warmer than the 360 millimeter Enermax unit, which is about twice the price of the Noctua cooler. Whether that's worth it is entirely up to you. The X62, as demonstrated in previous content, runs at comparatively awful performance given its price. This is due to the limited contact area of the cold blade, something that both Noctua and Enermax resolve with TR4-specific cold blades and coolers. Limiting ourselves to 40 dBA, the blender test has our Enermax 360mm unit at 41.6 degrees Celsius, with a 240mm unit running a 6 to 7 degree warmer temperature at 47.9 degrees. The NHU14S operates at 49 degrees, showing again the value of Noctua's optimization for what equates a 40 dBA output. That said, Enermax is objectively superior in terms of thermal performance with the 360 millimeter unit, and that primarily means that you could run still lower RPMs on the Enermax unit, well beyond where the other coolers would enter dangerous territory. It's just a matter of whether that price bump is worthwhile, as the NHU14S is now at around $80, a significant advantage. Finally, here's the full noise chart. This shows a lot of coolers that you wouldn't want to use or couldn't use on Threadripper. It's basically everything we've tested from LGA 11.5X and 2011 onward and includes the Enermax coolers at their max RPM along with the NHU14S, which will highlight all of those. So strictly looking at the 240 and the 360, there's not a big difference. If you were already committed to buying one of these liquid coolers and you're just wondering what the difference is between them for radiator size, it comes down to an hour testing overclocked at about four degrees for most of the tests. And then you could leverage that extra performance delta with the 360 to drop its fan speed still lower. If that's not something you typically do or plan to do, there's really not any value in it unless, I mean, there's not even a, a size value because it's bigger. So, and it's still 120 millimeter fans. So the, the 240 is plenty fine and isn't that much worse than the 360. The price difference is 20 bucks, so it's not that big of a jump either, but still $10 per two degrees more or less is what you end up paying, and that's not gonna gain you anything. It's not gonna get you better overclocking. It's not gonna get you anything extra at all, really, except for lower noise if you manually tune it. So that's how to look at these numbers. The Noxua unit is $80, so quite a bit cheaper. It's hard to find in stock right now, but if you can find it at $80, it is, uh, it's is—it's a really impressive performer when compared to the liquid coolers. It's still nine degrees warmer in some tests than the 240, 12 degrees warmer than the 360 in the same test. But uh, the thing you have to look at is where does that get you in terms of thermal performance? And we're still not really close to throttle territory with the air cooler at that performance level. So uh, there are reasons to buy each and they primarily come down to what case are you using? Do you need the top graphics card slot? Because some of the motherboards with the Noctua cooler won't necessarily support the top slot, but also Threadripper has a million PCIe lanes. So does that even matter besides the looks? Uh, unless you have multiple cards, those are the things to consider for liquid coolers, obviously, uh, they are liquid coolers, so it, technically it has a fill port. Generally speaking, the cooler will outlive the usable life of the system anyway, but if you're extremely concerned about uptime, then air is probably the better way to go. That said, uh, if you are worried about permeation, you can refill this. It's really more for their RMA department than for you, but you can make use of it. So yeah, uh, plenty good for all three of these coolers. The only one that we would definitely not recommend, actually two that we'd definitely not recommend, would be the 120 millimeter Noxwood cooler, which is just insanely far behind the 140. Just buy the 140 for 10 extra dollars, it's so much better. 
and the X62, which represents all Asetek coolers, they're just not that good on Threadripper because the cold plate contact area is very small. So that's it for this time. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly or store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or our new stickers, which we finally got in. So we need to slap it onto the Xbox, turn it on and watch it melt off because the Xbox hits really high idle temperatures as you can see in our previous video or one of them. Thank you for watching as always. I'll see you all next time.